Hello, hello, Mordi Mers here and welcome to the playoffs of FIDE Chess Olympia 2020. As you already know, the winners of four pools in the top division advanced to the quarterfinals. Uh, so these teams were India, Azerbaijan, Russia and USA. And the teams which got the second and third place had to play in the playoffs. So we had the eight teams uh, who fights for the, for the spots in the quarterfinals. Greece against Armenia, Bulgaria against Poland, uh, Hungary against Germany. Germany and China against Ukraine. I will show you all the all the scores at the end of the video. Uh, but for now, I would like to show you the game uh, from the match between Greece and Armenia. So on the first board, we had the Levon Aronian and he's gonna play as white and his opponent Christos Banikas uh, from Greece, who's gonna play as black. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. We have d4 by uh, Levon Aronian, knight f6, knight f3, g6, knight c3. So Levon Aronian doesn't care about moves like c4. He plays knight c3 just to support e4 immediately. So now e4 can be played. This is why Christos Banikas immediately played d5, controlling e4. And now we have bishop f4. So Jobava London system, knight gonna jump um, to b5. And that is, uh, you know, some serious threat and a lot of theory. However, interesting thing, Anish Giri came to the stream um, and he told us a bit about the the Greek players that they play very very solid opening the theory they know really really great and uh, and also they has a huge respect for the player so uh, they play very solid and uh, sometimes it's it's a drawback because they cannot win the games against stronger opponents but definitely both of the players know what they are doing. We have bishop g7 by Banikas and now knight b5 as planned. Knight a6 defending the c7 and now e3 developing move making a space for the bishop opening the diagonal and now black can go for the castle or can play c6 uh, supporting the pawn on d5 and also kicking the knight. However Banikas went for knight h5 immediately attack this London bishop uh, and now uh, Levon Aronian doesn't want to lose it so we have bishop g5 h6 kicking the bishop even further bishop h4 and now c6 kicking the knight so knight a3 uh, before we have some games in the database where knight c3 was played knight a3 isn't new because after transposition this position also was reached and the main idea here is g5 however uh, Christos Banikas placed bishop g4 pinning the knight uh, we have bishop e2 and now knight c7 improving the position of the knight now the knight can support d5 pawn and also preparing c5 so th the pawn doesn't need the support uh, we have c4 now attacking the center and castle by Christos Banikas. Queen b3 now uh, focusing on the uh, on the b7 and also putting the pressure on d5 so rook b8 defending and now rook c1 as the c file gonna be open of course so uh, it's always good to have the rook on c1 uh, and finally we have g5 so black was waiting with that move if white gonna castle then of course exchanging the, the bishop on g3 is, is, is really great for black but you know how long can you wait finally we have g5 we have bishop g3 and now knight g3 h takes on g3 so the rook has the open uh, h file however need the support of other pieces and this is the idea of black uh, with playing with the very weak light square bishop to to g4 now exchanging this bishop for this knight which could operate potentially on the king side uh, is 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 pretty nice idea so this is why this bishop g4 was quite a nice novelty we have bishop takes on f3 g takes on f3 and now c5 so christos banikas want to open as many files as many diagonals as possible uh, as the king is still in the center so we have c takes on d5 c takes on d4 
and now e4 supporting the pawn on d5 and creating this pawn chain so trying to make a uh, play as solid as possible now we have e6 so Christos Banikas would like to win as his team um, has some problems and lost the first round and in the second round also the players doesn't have a good position so he has to play a little bit more aggressive we have knight b5 now asking to exchange this knight we have knight b5 bishop b5 uh, and now e takes on d5 e takes on d5 and now look at this very interesting unusual position white has the passed pawn central passed pawn isolated without the support but also black has the same so look at this 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 is quite unusual and very interesting uh, and also black has the support for the pawn and also white has the uh, bishop on the on the light square so this bishop can potentially you know support the pawn it's gonna be very difficult to actually eliminate uh, both of these pawns we have queen b6 by Christos and now castle. So Levon Aronian finally said, okay, uh, it's not so great for, for my king. Uh, I play castle, the rook is needed in the center. We have rook f to d8 by Christos Banikas, king g2 and now queen d6. And this queen uh, works as a blocker and queen isn't a great blocker usually. But in this case, why not? There are no knights to harass the queen. There is, there is no uh, dark square bishop as well. And the rooks uh, also, you know, these squares are controlled by the, by the pawn. So it's not so easy actually um, to kick the queen. Also, this queen, you know, is quite well centralized. So it controls a lot of squares. If the queen moves, the queen b4 will be possible in the future. The queen also watch at g3. So any ideas like h5, h4 are possible here. We have rook f to e1. So Levon Aronian concentrate on uh, controlling them the open files but there are two open files so Christos Banikas doesn't care for now Bishop f6 making a space for the king but also controlling e7 just you know some entry points for the for the rook so why not uh, we have queen d3 also blocking centralizing the queen um, and making a space for the bishop as the bishop of course can be uh, can be attacked pretty easily so uh, we have king g7 and now bishop c4 so before any pawns moving uh, then we have bishop c4 rook b to c8 and now rook c to d1 so Levon Aronian doesn't want to exchange the rooks and believe me or not until now we had for the most of the moves you know the stockfish shows zero zero it's it's like very solid game played by both of the players there are no possibilities you know to to get advantage the little advantage of the game uh, and here Christos Banikas start to play very actively so queen before as planned uh, and now attacking the pawn on b2 so we have bishop b3 blocking the attack and now a5 preparing of course a4 we have a3 kicking the queen queen b6 and here Levon Aronian had the very interesting move, a bishop c2, very active move. So what black would have to play is something like king f8, but the queen also can come to h7, or uh, some ugly move like rook to h8, and it, it's, it's just ugly. It, it can support, of course, the march of the pawn, but the center is uh, more important in this case. So bishop c2 could be very, very interesting. However, we have rook e2 by Levon Aronian, so he wants to support the pawn uh, because if the bishop is, for example, kicked from there, then the queen can take um, on b2. So uh, rook e2, also in the future it's possible, for example, to, to double the rooks. We have queen a6 now asking to exchange the queens, but also uh, supporting a4 move and kicking the bishop. And now white could exchange the queens, however, is not that great. This is the weakness, definitely, but white also creates the weakness uh, on b2. So, for example, now the black can put the pressure on, on the b file, semi-open b file, and also in the right moment can play something like d3 with the, you know, support of the bishop attacking this weakness. So it doesn't look so great. 
This is why we have queen d2, so Levon Aronian uh, avoids the exchange, and now we have queen b5, improving the position of the queen, attacking the bishop, we have bishop a2, and now a4, completely locking the pawns on the queen side, as b4 is not possible because of the n on b3, so Levon Aronian has to find another plan. We have rook e4, indicating that, okay, I'm gonna give up the exchange, but I'm gonna have these past pawns and you're not gonna have any, so maybe that's my chance. Uh, and Banika said, okay, queen c5, uh, go for that, but we're gonna exchange the queens as well. So I think I'm gonna stand better after. Uh, so Levon said, okay, maybe that's not the greatest idea, we have f4. And now g takes on f4 would be would be suicidal because after queen f4 Dwight gonna have very interesting game here you know queen f5 rook can come to g4 and so on very strong attack so this is why we have queen c2 however there is the problem with this move because now yes black tries to exchange the queens however uh, white can say okay let's exchange but i'm gonna get this pawn for free and now you can take my queen and i'm gonna take um, the rook and the point is if the bishop takes um, now the, the d4, then actually there is no queen's exchange. So after queen d4, we would have something like f6. Uh, and then after exchanging, a position of the king isn't that great. For example, bishop b1, uh, kicking the queen. And white would have extremely strong continuation here with the bishop b5. Bishop b5 attacking the, the, the rook. And if the rook is moved, let's say rook b8, then queen b4. And look at this move, queen b4, uh, with the idea of bringing the rook to e1 uh, and then to e7. And it cannot be stopped, it can be stopped only by the moves like rook h8, uh, supporting, you know, controlling h7. And uh, I would like to just show you why, because, uh, for example, if the queen takes the rook, probably you thought, okay, take the rook, why not? Uh, then there is queen e7. And after king g8, queen h7. Uh, and after king f8, we of course have bishop e6. And this is a checkmate. And the only way to stop the checkmate is actually queen d5 with check. And after bishop d5, rook d5, there is the one problem. Uh, queen h8 and of course winning the rook and the game. So that's why taking the rook with the bishop is not possible. This is why we have queen d2 and now rook 4 to d2. So what white achieve is actually winning this pawn uh, and creating the passed pawn. So now uh, the time for black to, to play. We have g takes on f4, g takes on f4, creating the passed pawn on its own. However, it's not so easy to support the passed pawn. The king is very close, so always can block the, the pawn. Uh, and as, as you see, it's not so easy. We have Rook d6 now blocking the pawn, uh, but there is a different idea here. Uh, because after rook e1, uh, black would like to take this pawn. And now how to continue? Uh, move the rook and then allow white actually to progress or maybe bring a rook to c5. So what would happen if we have rook c5? For example, king f3 and after rook b5, just bring another defender to the pawn. Um, and then let's say king f8 to, to bring the king closer to the passed pawn. Uh, king g4, this is another problem that the king, you know, uh, can advance too far and it's pretty dangerous. Rook d to b6 uh, and now d6. So this pawn can advance. Of course, the, the black can win that pawn. However, uh, you know, d7 and how do you gonna continue? Uh, rook d2, rook d2, bishop d8, the game can continue, however, uh, white stands pretty good here, so it's very difficult to even imagine that black can win that. And as I said at the beginning, uh, black would like to win that, so have to risk a bit more. We have rook b6 immediately. And now Levon Aronian said, okay, you can take that pawn, but I'm gonna advance. So we have d6, rook d8, d7. And now how to progress. If you play something slow like king f8, then always rook e2, e2 uh, and bring extra defender here. Black could try to eliminate this pawn, for example, bishop e7, let's say rook e5 with the idea of attack this pawn. Uh, but then black would have very interesting maneuver, bishop e6. Uh, and now this pawn is under attack and can be taken very easily. Um, so for example, rook f5, rook d7, rook f to d5, and it's again, it's very 
difficult to imagine that black can win that game. So black risk even more. We have rook b2 immediately. Uh, and now again, how to continue as white? Because this is too much, but white has to be very precise to, uh, to win the game. Uh, for example, if white play now rook e2, then after exchanging, how to continue? Uh, b5, of course, is coming. Rook d5, you can go after that pawn. Uh, and after, let's say, bishop e7, uh, going after the, the dark square pawn, uh, rook b5. And after exchanging, uh, this would be probably a draw as well. Uh, because after rook a4, let's say, exchanging, this is completely drawing opposite uh, color bishops and, and, and so on. So uh, not this way. Levon Aronian sense that he can win here uh, and he played the best move in the position. Rook b2. Uh, we have bishop b2 and now rook e7 defending the pawn on d7 and also um, attacking f7. And now this pawn cannot be defended. I, I hope you see that already because after rook f7 white gonna promote to the queen. So we had the bishop a3 with the attack on the on the rook, but now of course we have rook f7, king g6, and now king g3. So Levon Aronian tries to checkmate his opponent. Look at this, king h4, and this is a checkmate. If black tries to, for example, stop that, uh, then they would be forced to, to exchange the bishop for this pawn. Uh, yes, win that pawn. However, this pawn is lost as well. So with the extra bishop for the pawn, that should be enough to, to of course, win. Uh, this is why we have h5, making a space for the, for the king, so there is no checkmate anymore. We have f5 anyway, and now king h six and now f4 so look at this these pawns are extremely strong now and i told you at the beginning i will show you the idea how the isolated double pawn can be strong they control all the squares around together with the rook so now find the checkmate how would you checkmate your opponent we have bishop c5 with the idea of delivering a check and bring the bishop to b6 and control um, d, d8 so that is the defensive idea however now we have bishop b1 bishop b1 and the idea is very simple push f6 and then checkmate to h7 how to defend we have rook g8 king h3 and now even if black uh, plays the best move in the position rook h8 is not enough yes it's defending h7 however f6 is coming anyway and look at this this bishop controls all the squares this pawn controls the, the square this pawn also controls the king cannot move at all the king cannot move and for example bishop b6 now controlling d8 then white always have the maneuver rook e7 rook e7 and now rook e8 is coming the king cannot help the rook uh, because all of these squares are, are of course controlled so uh, yeah there is no hope for example bishop d8 rook e8 is coming anyway if the rooks are exchanged then of course white gonna have the queen if rook h7 then uh, white can for example play rook g8 and there is the checkmate in one thread and, uh, and yeah you cannot do anything you can postpone it a bit h4 uh, king g4 and now rook d7 making a space for the king but of course rook h8 and the king uh, doesn't have the, the legal moves now the only move is rook h7 and that would be a checkmate anyway so uh, rook h8 is the best move in the position however it doesn't work we have uh, bishop b6 immediately and now levon was thinking okay go for this uh, quite complicated line or maybe rook f6 but he played rook f6 uh, forking the king and, and the bishop and in this position Christos Banikas resign and uh, yeah I would like to show you what just happened in other games and as you see Armenia won against the Greece four and a half to one and a half in the first round in the second round um, they didn't bother they had the better positions in all the, of the games uh, Greece managed to win one game also from the lost position that was pretty amazing uh, however the rest games Armenia just 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 draw very safely won one more game and that of course is enough so a uh, quarter final we're gonna have India against Armenia uh, then Poland won uh, pretty easily against Bulgaria two first boards were too much uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda and Radosław Wojtaszek just won very confidently 
then Hungary won against Germany and Ukraine won against China. We had the draw in the first round, then again we had the draw and then Ukraine Kirill Shevchenko played as white. He had to win in Armageddon and Chinese player played the very defensive pretty well and it was completely drawish position so Ukrainian player he played just fast and, and Chinese player was not fast enough and he got flagged in completely drawing position symmetrical pawn structure opposite colors bishop and then Ukrainian player was just uh, faster so Kirill Shevchenko became the Ukrainian hero and this Armageddon actually decided that Ukraine gonna play against USA Poland against Azerbaijan and Russia against Hungary in the quarterfinals so that's all for today if you like this video press like if you didn't like for some reason press and like and if you want to follow the the Fide chess olympia 2020 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one